Hello, I'm Crafty Patty and thank you for stopping by. If you happen to be new to my channel, well, have a look at all my playlists because then you'll see that you just never know what I'm going to be up to next. And today I'm up to making fabric paper. I know that sounds really different, doesn't it? And I was intrigued too, so I just had to try it. And all you're going to need is three supplies, fabric, napkins or tissue paper, and glue. And this is what you can create. It's like sheets of paper that feel like cardboard or it can feel a little bit more like a harder fabric, depending on how many layers you make. And I'm going to go over what I feel I could have done better, what you might not want to do, or you can choose how many layers you're going to put on so it creates different thicknesses for different projects. And I'm going to explain that as I go along in the video. And yes, again, the video is long because I like to tell you so much information, but I will put timestamps in the description box below along with all the supplies and it will tell you where to go, what timestamp to go to for each project. Or fill your boots and watch the whole video. For your setup, you'll want to put down a non-stick surface so you can peel off your fabric cloth. This is freezer paper that I use a lot, so I'm reusing it. Waxy side up. You can use ceramic, but I try not to use too many plastic products. Um, anything with a shiny waxy surface will do. I've just taped it down with a bit of masking tape so it stays in place. I'll be using just the basic Elmer's glue all for my glue today. And I'm going to mix that up in one of my canning jars because I just happen to have a lot of canning jars. And again, I just try not to use plastic if I can. It by all means doesn't have to be an exact 50-50. I'll just put about that much in and I'll add my water. Just to guess a minute, I've got it here. So I'll add my water up to about here. Got a paper cup here with water in it, just tap water. Mix that up, then your glue substance will be ready to go. If you've done any spilling on the outside of your containers, good idea to give it a good clean because you want to be able to open that again for your next use. And good idea to label your containers so you know what's in them. Paint brushes. You can use a nice wide foam brush. They're very inexpensive to purchase. And also I do have hakes in my supply because they do a lot of watercolors as well. So I have this on hand and they're inexpensive to buy as well. Just find one that will fit into your jar of glue. And another little item, a small paint brush if you want to dip this in water and you go around your napkin and you can cut out certain images from your napkins if you would like to do that. You can choose to use napkins and there's so many gorgeous designs on napkins these days. I found some of these at HomeSense, a local store in my area. You can try Walmart, you can try Dollar Store, lots of places to look for napkins. You can also use tissue papers. You can find some really beautiful tissue papers in your birthday section of your dollar store or just your basic colors. You use some scraps I've had from another project. You can also get them in beautiful golds and silver, so you can use that as well. For your foundation fabric, you can use an unbleached cotton. That's what this is. I don't tend to use muslin because it's very expensive. Where I live, it's like $18 a meter, and that's just not what I'm going to use. To make uh, cheap pillow forms, I quite often go to Walmart and buy their pillows, and then I need to usually cut them down to get a square pillow, and this is the remainder of the fabric that was around the pillow. And this is quite a fine weave, so we'll try that. You want to think ahead on your projects a little bit, and if you want something that has an, a beautiful inside fabric, then choose a fabric you like for the inside. And this is uh, quilting cotton. 
I'm also going to try a heavier fabric just so you've got a comparison on different types of fabric you can use. And this is like a twill fabric. And as you can see, the um, grain in that is quite a bit heavier than the cottons. Sometimes you'll get lucky and your napkins are already pulled apart. So you can easily take these and just pull it right apart. But if not, and they are sticking together and you can't get them apart, then just dip your thumb and finger in some water and just go a little bit like that. And you will get them apart. And you'll find that uh, most napkins are a three ply. So that's where the uh, double sided tape comes in handy. There's your one. And you'll see that there's also another one in here as well. You can see it opening up there. And your double sided tape will be your friend on that one. All those back sides of those napkins that you've pulled apart, you're going to use this for your filler that goes down first for your design and that will give you some more thickness to your project. So don't throw those out. If you want just a certain image in one of your napkins, that's when you can come in with your water and your paintbrush and just paint around your image very loosely with your water. And then that water will soak into the napkin and then you can just tear it and the what I like, and why I like this is it gives it a real organic look. Oops, I didn't quite get there, you can tell. So we'll just cut around there. There we go. And it gives a feathering effect where you're pulling and tearing. And that makes for a neat effect. And it also allows for the ripped edge to adhere really nicely to whatever you're adhering it to, to your next tissue underneath. I ended up finding a bit of a narrower hake, so I'm going to use that instead of this one. I'm going to start on the pretty quilting cotton and every process, no matter what the fabric is, will all be the same, except I'm going to vary how many layers I do on certain different ones, just to get an idea for you, how many layers you need and the difference of thickness. So into our glue and just a simple saturation of the whole piece of fabric with your glue. Really easy. Being that this is quite a dark fabric that's coming through to the other side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the darker napkin and I'm going to start with those. So I'm just going to place those on top just to get it started. Don't worry about matching up your edges perfectly. It really doesn't matter. Just put them wherever you want. Chances are you're going to trim off your edges anyways. So I'm going to call that layer one and I'm going to keep track for you. I'm going to keep layering and then we're going to compare with the other ones. I'm not worrying about creases because I like creases in it. It gives it more dimension and more character. Don't worry about going off the edge because you can trim that off later. And that's layer number two. And now I'm starting layer number three. So the whole process is pretty easy. This is starting layer number four, just with the backing. So there's four layers. Rather than come in with the whole piece, I do like to tear it. Like I said, the torn edges will adhere better for you. 
the feeling of just slapping it down is really quite <laughs> therapeutic because I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist. So this is slapping it all over the place. <laughs> it feels really good. So that's one layer of colors. And this is number two. I'm going to do exactly the same for two more layers. And here's one of the little accent flowers that I had cut out with the water. So let's put on some of those and see how that looks. And I've got a few little parrots and birds here that I'm going to put on as well, just for fun. We have four layers of the backing, four layers of the colored napkins, and one layer of the top coat of the flowers and the birds. And I'll do just one last swipe across the whole thing. So I've gone across this way and I'll just come up with the brush up and down this way and then we'll just leave it alone. Now this one I'm going to do all tissue paper and you'll find that when you get your tissue paper it will only rip a certain way. So if you find that you're not getting it to rip this way, then you know you've got to go the other direction. And if you want to make long strips with it, then you just have to find the grain of the tissue paper and it will come down in long strips. We're now going to work on one of the unbleached cotton sheets. And I've ripped up a bunch of tissue paper. And what you can do is if you've got some pieces you've already got and they just look too square and too smooth, just scrunch it up and open it up and then you give it a bit more texture. Or you can rip them into strips like I've done with the gold. You can also lay a whole sheet on if you want to, just to get started, which is fine. But of course, we're going to start by just saturating our whole cloth with our 50% diluted glue, just like the other one we did. And the same as the napkins, we're just going to pop it on and glue it on. Same thing. Try to make sure your um, fabric underneath doesn't bunch up when you're brushing it. Because this is just going to be one of my many layers, I'm not really caring the colors or pattern right now. I'm just getting it on there to get some thickness. That's layer one. This time, I'm just going to come over to speed it up. I'm going to put a whole sheet on for layer two. Layer three, I've just got a bunch of strips of all different kinds of goodies here. So I'm going to keep going here, and I'm just going to keep layering and layering and layering. I don't think you really have to wash this. I think this is going to be on the, a little bit on the boring side, because I think you got the idea. You just go in any which direction. And I'm going to go for four layers on the top here, approximately. And then I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to do four layers on the other side. Four layers. It's kind of reminding me of my crazy quilt I was working on just uh, the other couple of weeks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift this up carefully and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to add tissue to the back side as well. So lift that right up, plop it right back down 
And now I'm going to add tissue to this side. Once you've got that turned over, you can come in just with a small amount of glue here. It's already soaked through quite a bit, but if you add a bit more glue, it'll just help to have those first layers stick nicely. You don't need as much as the first time. Okay, I don't want to bore you to tears here with every last piece. So I'm going to keep going and I'll show you when I've got my fourth layer on there. But it's exactly the same as the other side. You're just plopping it on any old which way. Don't think about it too much and just get her on. And make sure you do a good cleaning of the rim of your jar and clean out your paintbrush so you're good to go for the next day. I left these overnight and this one is still feeling a little bit damp because these have got a lot of layers. We're going to also try some with only a couple layers but this one I wanted to make really heavy super super thick and so it's going to take a bit longer to dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off the parchment paper and I'm going to turn this over and give the back side a chance to dry. And I'll do the same with this one. This was four layers on the top, four layers on the back. So we're just going to take this one off and I can see that uh, some of the tissue paper is sticking but not too bad. I'm going to carefully loosen that up and we can stick it back down again. That's not parchment, that's paint from the project. Okay, so once I've got that lifted up, I'll put this back down this way and I'm just going to push it in a little bit with my fingers here anything like lift it up now I'm working on the twill fabric which is a heavier fabric and again I'm going to saturate the bottom of this got one thin layer of my glue solution on there and then I'm just going to come in with my backing of my napkins and I'll do one layer and now I'm going to come in with this napkin I am not going to tear it I'm going to place it right on top So I'm going to come up and just overlap up here and again just bring it down. And because I'm getting a lot of um, more bulk in the middle than I am on the edge, I'm going to rip this one down in the middle. And then just place this one on the edge here. Just the two layers and the twill on the bottom and then you can see what you get with two layers here's my just final coat all the way through with more glue then what I do is I come in and I really check to make sure that there are no bubbles and I really push down on my brush and just go around and just tamp it all down. This is the pillowcase that um, I had left over. So again, I'll saturate this one. Because I have the stripes in this fabric, I'm gonna come in with this uh, tissue paper that has the darker pattern on it. one application where it's best that you've got only one ply so I made sure I've got all the other two plies off of this napkin and this time I'm just going to scrunch it up 
as much as I can, really scrunch it, and then open it up. Not all the way, but just where it's still nice and crunched up. And then I'm going to apply it when it's crunched. So let's just say like right there. And that's when after I want all these wonderful little scrunched up pieces. So I can just tap it down and that will give it lots of texture. And I will continue in that manner, just scrunching and just giving it a real bumpy, wild texture. Here's some of these little birdies. And as you saw on the slip um, over here, I'm just getting it placed. And then you can come down and really Stamp it in with the end of your brush. And again, once you're happy with your design, come over again with a layer of glue and then come down and really tamp that down again because I can see some air bubbles coming up. And here's our final effects the morning after. This was the twill, a bit of a heavier cotton. The glue didn't come through to the other side. So you'd be able to use that for a lining on the inside of any of your projects. And the characteristics is it's more like a, almost like a bendable cardboard, I kind of say. It doesn't really feel like fabric and it doesn't feel like paper. It's the combination of both of them. So there's that one and there's um, a close up. This one here was the pillowcase. And I did notice that on one corner, all the others are looking really good that it stuck well, but I didn't get this corner here, but I can always come in and put some more glue down there and let that dry again if I'm concerned with that. And again, it didn't lead through to the other side, so this side would be fine for a lining. And here's the front. This is the one where we scrunched it all up to get more of a texture. This was the quilting cotton that we used on the foundation. And then we put the layers on top. And this one ended up being eight layers. So it's definitely a lot thicker, feeling more like um, a strong cardboard for this one. And on this one, the quilting cotton, again, I Look, it looks like it's like lifting up right here. It might have been, I just didn't get enough glue on the edge. But if you're going to sew this one, then I wouldn't worry about that one and gluing it again. I would just sew around the edge. This one was the unbleached cotton where we put four layers on top with the tissue paper. All the other ones were napkins, by the way. This is the only one I did in tissue paper. And there's the front and the back. Four layers on, well, not really four, maybe approximately four layers on both sides. And this one feels like a, a good solid cardboard. So if you're kind of thinking on projects, I'd be thinking, what would you normally make with a cardboard project or a thick cardstock? And that's what you could make with these. To make these six projects, I'm just letting you know that this container was full of glue and uh, there's 950 mils in the full container. And I'm guessing I used approximately just a little bit more than a third. So I've used about 320 mils. Okay, my, my mind is always racing on ideas and things to do. And I'm sitting here going, I wonder if I could make a bowl. I have no idea. Maybe people have done this. I haven't seen it, but I'm sure it's probably out there. Um, but let's see if we can do this. So I don't want my cloth, this is the unbleached cotton, to stick to my bowl. And I never, I don't have like saran wrap in the house. I don't like to use plastic if I can help it. So I'm going to wrap, sorry, I'm going to actually apply some of this Vaseline just around my bowl and hope that that will help 
to prevent it from sticking. Now I could also use anything that's glossy, like it could be like um, packing tape would work probably. All right, so I've got Vaseline over the whole bowl there and I'm just going to drape this on so it's fairly even on both sides here. And then once I put the glue on, I'm just gonna make pleats as I go. So like, let's say I'm just gonna make a pleat like right there. Do some glue on the other side and then pleat it over and that will make it stick better. I'm making this up as I go. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work, but if it does, hey, something more fun to make. Do you think this is going to work? <laughs> I hope so. Okay, so I'm going to continue on and I'm just going to keep adding the tissue paper around here and I think I'll probably do like two to three layers. All right, so I'll come back to you when I've got that done because otherwise I'm going to bore you to tears. I have a lot of layers that came up to the top here, so I've got quite a few layers there. So I'm just going to come around now and just... Uh, reinforce my sides a bit more and give my sides more layers. So I've got quite a few layers, I've probably about four to five. So I'm going to flip this on its butt and I'm just going to trim off that fabric on the edge here. Okay, I'm gonna turn that back around to the other side and we're gonna let that dry. And you are going to wish me luck. <laughs> I'm gonna just tap this down again, like before, making sure there's no air bubbles. And the idea is when this is dry, I'm going to remove it from my mold, from the bowl, and then put this on the inside as well. I'm going to try one more experiment, whereas this bowl I put the Vaseline underneath, hoping that that will allow it not to stick to the cloth. This time I'm using a compostable bag, so after I'm finished with this I can still reuse it and do my composted vegetables with it so it's not a wasted item and it's not putting plastic into the landfill. So I'm going to try this one again. And we'll do the same thing as before, just making the pleats as we go around and I'll put this on. And same as this one, once you've got all your pleats done, you can go around with your napkins. Because I've got a lot of the white left over, from the inside of the napkins, I'm going to cover it all first with the white, and then I'll come in with the color. So I've gone around about four times with the white tissue paper, and now I'll come in with my colored, actually not tissue paper, sorry. I'm using napkins right now. Napkins, serviettes, whatever you call them in your country. And same as the other one, I'm going to lift this up and uh, trim up my top edge just to get that started. I'm trying not to cut the uh, compostable bag so I can reuse that. And we'll turn that back around and let that dry. And see what we get in the morning. It should be exciting. We have our bowls. And you're probably thinking, why did she put Vaseline on there? Is that actually going to work? And I actually got a little bit worried because it felt like it was sticking. But what I did, 
I just grabbed um, my little gauge here, and I just went down just a few areas here to see if it would loosen up, and it, in fact, it, it did. It wasn't stuck at all. It just felt like it was, and then I was able to get that right off the bowl, and there it is. And that one comes right off beautifully. So this is probably the preferred choice, and you can reuse that bag many times and then use it for composting. So nothing going into the garbage that we don't want to go in the garbage. And there's the outside, really organic looking. It almost looks like a paper mache, but I love it. I'm just using one of the backings for napkins, just making sure I don't have any big gobs of Vaseline in here. And most of it has actually soaked into the fabric, so I think we're good. And same as before, I'm just going to soak the inside. And then I'm going to start with just the plain backing, the white of the napkins, and then I'm going to come in with the same color napkin that I did on the outside. And the only difference here is I'm going to try to bring some up and over the lip of the edge here, so it makes a nice clean edge. So I probably will have to actually get a, just a little bit of glue on the outside here as well. This isn't 100% dry, but it's dry enough that I can work with it. And being that I'm going to do that, I might as well just go all the way around. Save myself some trouble here. There we go. And then you can just glue it down to the outside and into the inside. And carry on. And once I get that inside done, that's going to stiffen this up because, like I said, this isn't 100% dry yet, and it'll be a firmer basket when I'm finished. So you've got all your edge covered. My white layer is done, and I'm going around with the same color napkin as the first one, and just making sure that I cover my edge, just bringing it over like so. Just enough so it gets down the other side and then applying the glue just as before. And you can see how this glue has now softened up the basket. That's fine because it will harden up again once it's dry. And I'm finding that the easiest way to do this part is just like I did the other ones, is just come down and tamp it in like this. And that's working really well for me. And just like before with the wet paintbrush, I'm going to put a few little accents in this one as well. So I'll put that into the bottom and maybe some around the outside. The base of this bowl was all done with this napkin. And then I went around with my paintbrush and cut out accents out of this napkin with leaves and the flowers. And I've ended up with this. I am really happy with the way that turned out. I'm quite excited to have that dry now. And if you are doing this, uh, make it look more natural by actually having some of the leaves fall over the side like this one here. And just bringing them up right up to the top, not just around the middle. It just makes it look more natural. And here's the outside. Again, I've just got some leaves coming off of the top and then a few of the main flowers here and there. So there's that one. So I'm going to let that dry up now and harden up again. And I've decided I'm going to turn this one, which was the twill, and the two layers on the top, into some cute little wallets. Here's the really easy pattern that I've worked out. You're going to cut a piece of paper that's four inches wide and 12 inches high. I also have the centimeters written down here for you if you need those. And then this little 
wallet will be folded at every two and a half inches and I've left two inches on the top for the fold over. So let's cut out your paper fabric four inches by 12 inches and I'll just fold this up in case it's too far away from the camera so you can see the measurements. And every two and a half inches there'll be a fold. Total length and that was the width. And then our last little part to fold over is two inches. You can round the corners or do a scallop edge, whatever you like for your little fold over flap. I am using my rotary cutter to cut through and it's working just fine. So I'm just going to straighten up my one side here and then I'm gonna bring it over and I'm going to cut my four inch width. Just going to match up my paper fabric to my grid line and then I will clean up my one inch here, make it nice and even. And I wasn't paying attention to the length I had. I could have cut this a little bit finer here and I would have had my exact 12 inches, but that's okay. My little flap to come over will just be slightly smaller. That's okay. As long as we've got a nice straight edge to work with. So I'm just going to get as close as I can on my fabric here and that will be fine. For your template, if you want to mark off your two and a half inches, and this is your two inches, and then just crease on all those lines. That will help to show you how I'm going to do the fold for our little wallet. And this is how you'll actually fold your wallet. So here's your bottom. You're going to come up five inches. So two of these two and a half sections. And then now this one is going to get folded in half and it's going to come up like that. And this is your flap that will come down. And the reason I'm folding that way is because I want the single one in the middle and the more stronger one to the outside. So now that you know how to do that, do that on your actual fabric paper. I just realized I lost the footage or I wasn't filming when I did the scallop edge. So all I did there was I took my napkin, I laid it on there, I drew on and marked with my pen, and then I came in with some nice sharp scissors, and then I just trimmed around, and that's how I made my scallop edge, if you want to do the same. On the right side of your little wallet, Place your paper fabric right on one of your grid lines and measure up your two and a half inches or 6.4 centimeters. And then if you place your ruler on that line, then you can make a nice crease with that ruler. So just mark it on there, hold it in place, and then bring it up and give it a little bit of a crease. Once you've done your crease, you can also come in with a bone folder to make a really nice crease and just use that to crease it over. Once you've made that crease, you're going to turn it to the back side. You're going to measure up five inches. There's your next one. Again, use your ruler just to get it started. And then once it's started, again, use your bone folder and really give it a, a good pressing. This one is now going to come all the way up. You've already made your crease on this one. So you can do one more here. And that's coming up another two and a half inches from your last one. Again, your ruler. 
and then just get it started with the ruler and then again using your pen folder to make a really nice crease. There you've made all your creases. So again, this one's coming right up. And this one is folding up like so. That's going to be your little wallet. Now this one here, I'm suggesting you don't make a total crease yet because depending on how much you put in here, if you crease it right close to the edge, you might not be able to get anything in it. So better to kind of come up a little bit, make it about a quarter inch up and then just do a little rollover just for now until you get a good idea on how much you're going to put in your wallet. So you're having a little bit of a gap there. I'm going to attempt an overcast stitch on my machine. I've never used it on the Quilt Expression yet. I've just tried just a single layer and that's sort of the idea where your needle will go off the edge of the fabric and it wraps around to the other side. So you kind of get a bounding of thread on the outside and then a little stitching here. Now I'm going to attempt to try all of these layers. I don't know if my machine will handle it, but let's give it a try. Okay, wish me luck. I'm going to go really slowly. See, it's really punching a hole through that. <laughs> That's why I don't want to go too fast. I don't want to break the needle. But it is punching through. So I don't know what kind of machine you've got. But I think using the denim needle helps because it will pierce through those fabrics. Because I've got three layers I'm going through. But it's doing exactly what I want it to do. So, all right, we will keep going here and I'll show you when I'm finished. It did work. There's the front and there's the back and there's the sides. See how the thread wraps around on the edge for the overcast stitch. I have the Hapton Heavy Duty Snap Faster Tool. So I'm going to be using this to add on a snap. And there we go. We've got our side sewn, we've got a little snap enclosure, and it will fit three cards. And I've got a little pocket for even some money, or coins, or whatever else you want to put in there. And I can snap that shut, and away we go. Yeah, it's pretty cute. And the amount of different designs you can get is limitless. And like I say, you're never going to find another one like this anywhere because it's all just made by hand and you chose the napkins and you can do any colors you want. So there you go. On the tissue paper one, because it's fairly stiff like cardboard, I've decided to make a gift box. So I've worked out how big my piece is, and of course you can make it any size you want, but these two pieces will fit nicely on my sheet of fabric paper. And then I've got some leftovers for bookmarks or whatever I want to make. So I've made these seven inches by seven inches or 17.8 centimeters for the square and then the inside of the box will be three inches by three inches or 7.6 centimeters and then for the lid I've cut a five inch square or 13 centimeters and then the inside box will be just slightly bigger as you can see the lines I've drawn here the this is the exact three inch mark and I'm just bringing out slightly a little bit further just so the lid isn't so tight it won't go on. So that's what I'm doing for my lid 
and we'll cut that out now with my rotary cutter and then we'll put it together. So I'll just use the piece of paper for my template and we'll just square up this one edge here. Just have to make a few little cuts there. It was more crispy than I thought. <laughs> I'm just going to turn this around because I prefer to keep most of the bulk of what I'm cutting underneath my ruler so I've got more support. So I'll just bring my template back up to that edge and then we'll put on this edge because it's, it's a little tiny bit bumpy. I'm not going to come all the way through down the end here just in case I want to have a long piece for something here. I might have to make a couple passes here I think. I might have to put in a new rotary cutter when I'm done but a new blade. There we go. That went through good. There's that one, and we're going to just do the other one. And now with my Sharpie pen, I've got this sitting on my guidelines, and I've got my ruler sitting on a grid line. So I can measure up two inches. Starting at my two inches, I'm going to just draw my cut line from there down. I'm going to turn it because I'm going to cut this way. So do the same thing on all four sides. So you're going to come in with a pair of scissors now and you're going to cut up just on that line and don't cut any further than your line. And for your lid, the same idea, but this time we're only going to measure up one inch. But remember, we're going to make this just a titch bigger. So when you come over and you find your line on your grid board, just come right on top of it, just so it's slightly bigger. And this one, you're going to bring it just slightly down. And then you can mark your one inch mark. And just like our wallet, you can use your ruler to bring it along there and then just bring it up just to get it, the bend started. And then you can finish it with your bone folder. Going all the way around. You can bend it against your bone folder as well if that helps you. Once you've got it all creased, you'll notice that one will go inside this way, then the next one, that one will be on the inside, and this one will be on the inside, and then this one will be on the inside. So when you find which one is going in, you can use some glue stick, as much as you can put on there, and then close it shut. And then pop on a magic clip to hold it in place. Actually, maybe two of them. And you'll see I didn't get a very good meat on this one, but I'm going to cut that off afterwards so it looks prettier. Do the exact same thing to your bottom. This is the lid. And then just go around and find your flaps and just make sure you hold them in place for the glue stick to hold. You can also use clothespins as well if you don't have magic clips. Again, I always say if a craft is has got some imperfections, good. Because what's the point in making something that looks like you bought it from the store, right? So if you've got one side that's not quite perfect, then you can fix it up a little bit. You can just come in and cut up to the edge there. and then just trim it off. Close enough. But the beauty of these boxes is you are never ever going to find another one like it anywhere. It's an original. Because you might be thinking, why don't you just 
buy a box? Well, because it's fun making them. And it's homemade. That's the beauty of it. There's your lid. And I'll do the same for the bottom. And with all your scraps, you can make some beautiful bookmarks. Just punch a hole in the top. And I've got some sayings here that I got from Amazon. They're just motivational quotes. So I can take some of these off and put them on, add a tassel, and that'll be a beautiful bookmark. And I've got about 12 strands of thin yarn here. So I'm just going to wrap one string around this way. And then I will be able to pull all of those through my little hole. Get that. And I can get all these through. Find the center again. Here's my center. Pass all these ends through that loop. And then pull it closed. And just pull on all the strands to make sure that they're nice and even. There's one here that I have to find. And then just cut off your ends so you can make your little fringe. There's a bookmark. And to finish off my bookmark, I have added one coat of Mod Podge gloss and it just helps to hold on the stickers that were just double sided tape and it will just protect this beautiful artwork that we've done. So there's the gloss side and just to compare, this is what it looks like without any Mod Podge on it. Now you might like the natural look better you've got the option of either one. And here's another little idea for you. I've got these little tiny paper booklets that I keep in my purse for when those one times are that you need a piece of paper to write on. And so we're going to make one of those with our fabric paper. I had some scraps left over, so I've cut a piece at three inches by eight inches, or 7.6 centimeters by 20 centimeters. And I've cut scrap pieces of paper that I have hand dyed, and I'll show you that in a minute, by two and seven eighths, which is slightly smaller than my three, so it'll fit inside the cover, by three and a half inches, or eight and, or 8.9 centimeters by 7.3 centimeters. There's my cover. So I'm going to fold this up, so I've got a little bit of part to tuck my paper in and staple my paper in, and this one will come over, and you want it to fold so you've got it, just so it will tuck underneath, like so. And I'll show you how that fits in. Here's all my papers that I've cut, and these I just hand dyed from copy paper. This was actually party streamers that I just ripped up, put on some copy paper and sprayed it with water and let it sit for a while. And this is tissue paper. Um, I found that some of the tissue paper didn't come out, but the pink and the purple sure did. So I'm just going to even up all my ends. And they're going to go into the little fold here, right at the bottom. Even it from side to side so the papers fit in. That's why we made it just slightly smaller. And then we'll staple this closer to the edge here so we've got enough flap that this can come in and close off. There's our three staples along the bottom. And now it's just a matter of bringing this down. And you just 
fold it in to the edge there, and you've got a little cute little pocket full of paper. Good way to use up the leftovers, right? And it's so pretty. And I decided to add a little saying on top of a little paper booklet, travel the world over to find the beautiful. And of course, when you open it upside, you'll find some beautiful pages. A little observation here for you. This was the one that I did with the twill and two layers of serviette napkins on the outside. You only need to save tissues. And this I'm loving. It's got a beautiful feel to it. It's pliable and it's easy to work with. So when I make another batch, I'll definitely not go any more than two layers on here. If you want a little bit of rigidity, then go for thicker material on the backing, which was the twill for there. And if you want it even a little bit more looser, then use your unbleached cotton or muslin. Now, you did see me show you this box. This turned out like a really rigid cardboard. Great for making a little box, but I'm gonna be honest with you, when I went to bend this into its shape, it cracked in some of the areas you can see here. Whereas this one was very pliable, no cracking whatsoever. So that's just something to think about. It also could have been the tissue paper because this was the tissue paper, whereas this was the napkins. If that makes any difference, I'm not sure. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. And you'll probably find that if you look at other videos, a lot of people are using the fabric paper to make junk journals. Now, I just made like a little mini, I would say, just for a journal, not a junk journal. In the next video coming up, I will explain how I made the coffee stained pages in this little tiny mini journal. So don't forget to put on your notification bells and then you will find out when that video is up and published so you can make some fun, beautiful pages like I did. Until next time. Bye-bye.